So a couple days ago, I released a video going over the Manjaro Gnome Edition, and the thing that stood out to me the most was the tiling option within their layout switcher. So I decided to learn a little bit more about it. So in this video, what we're going to do is go over the general installation process, setup, and configuration of what is known as the uh, Material Shell Gnome Extension. Right here is their GitHub page. If you want to completely skip this video, there'll be a link to this in the description. Everything I'm going to be talking about is on this page, so that is an option for you. Now, I'm currently running this Material Gnome Shell extension on this Ubuntu virtual machine because I wanted to make sure it ran good in something other than that Manjaro install. So this is kind of an example. This is the ratio layout here. And you could go ahead and just grab any window, move it around. There's also hotkeys for everything, which I will be getting into, as well as the configuration that you see here to have these uh, borders over the active windows and the gaps and everything like that. But first, just as a really quick refresher, up here on the top panel is all your applications. So you could go ahead and use this to switch in between your active windows, or you could just simply click on them and that will do the trick as well. And then over here you have various workspaces. So you see I have this workspace open. I have this workspace, which is more of a demonstration of the ratio layout. And then I have this workspace, which is purely Firefox to show you the GitHub page and all that. And if you do open a new workspace, it brings up this uh, application launching window which is basically the GNOME shell layout, which you can see here if you open up the traditional GNOME shell with the Windows key, you have everything, you have your workspaces over here. You can search for applications and everything, but if you go ahead and actually search something, so let's open up files real quick, it will still follow that tiling window manager type layout. But if we go over here into a new workspace, this is kind of how we open it up this way. So let's open up calendar in this workspace, and you can see it automatically tiles. And I could either hit Control X, and that will bring up this to open a new window. So let's say I want to open up the Disk Usage Analyzer. You can see it automatically tiles, and then I could open up another thing. Let's open up the terminal, and then you can see it automatically tiles down here. So it is a really nice uh, little extension we have here. And like I said, we're going to be getting into all the different configurations and shortcuts and everything right after we go over the installation process. And installing this is super easy. You do have an option to manually install it through the terminal and all that, depending on what distribution you're on. But being that this is a GNOME extension, you could just jump over to this GNOME extension page and toggle this little switch to on. If that switch isn't available, you will have to get a uh, extension on your Firefox browser. It's really easy, it takes three seconds, and then you could go ahead and toggle this on. And as soon as you toggle it on, it will automatically activate the extension. It won't look too good right out of the box. You will have to go over and uh, play around with some of the settings, which is what we're going to go do right now. So let's go ahead. I'm going to close out some of these windows just so this uh, virtual machine stays running pretty good. There we go. And you can see that we're on this workspace. So if I go ahead and switch to a different one, it will close out that workspace because there's no longer any active windows on it. But if we go ahead and jump over here to this workspace, uh, one thing if you log in and log out while you have windows open, it will keep the uh, workspace you had or the uh, layout you had before you left. That's what this is right here. I had a different extensions window open. So it's giving me the option to click anywhere to go ahead and open this up. But it was a dialog box for something, so it's probably not going to work. So I'm just going to go ahead and close that out. And now right here under your extensions, you see we have manually installed the material shell. You can enable or disable that here. One thing I would not recommend uh, disabling these, I tried to do that and I broke a couple things and I had to reboot, go in and re-enable them. So do be careful playing with these built-in extensions on Ubuntu. But to customize this and edit the settings around, you just wanna hit this little gear icon right here and then it will open up the window. Now I could just go ahead and drag this over here, make this my primary window and we could go ahead and start customizing some of the settings. I'm not gonna go over every single setting, just the primary ones that I think are the most important such as theme, you could change this between light and dark if you'd like to. The uh, primary UI color I set to orange to kind of match the Ubuntu color scheming. You could see that pulls the color for the little search box here, your active workspace, as well as these window border colors, which is a setting that you're gonna have to enable. As far as these panels up here, so your application and workspace panel, you can move those around. So if you prefer your applications to be on the bottom, you could just switch this to bottom. And now you can see my applications are down there. I'm gonna throw that back up top and you can do the same thing with the workspaces to move it onto the right of your screen. Right here we have the panel size. I have it set to 72 just so you all can see it better. 
but you could go ahead and make that smaller if you want to, or go ahead and make that bigger. Right here you have opacity if you want to make your panels transparent. You have a couple things with the taskbar and icon styles, general surface opacity. You could blur the background. That really doesn't do much other than make it a little bit darker, so I don't really do that. You have your uh, display clock options here. And right here, this focus effect is what I was talking about with this border. So you can see I have it set to border. The default will just kind of black out, not black out, but it'll make these windows, the inactive windows, a little bit darker. Or you could do none, which I wouldn't recommend, because then the only way to see is with the line up here. So I like the border effect. It looks cool, and that's what I generally do in like i3 or any other window manager I happen to be in. And then you have some tweaks here, so you could go ahead and customize that if you want your uh, cycling through windows and workspaces to perform a certain way. Or you could disable material shell notifications. Uh, down here, tiling layouts. This is the more important thing. You can see the only things I have selected are the maximize layout and the ratio-based grid layout. The ratio-based grid is how you'd expect a tiling window manager to work. It will open up a full screen window and then two halves and then the third window will open right here. And then if you open a fourth window, it will appear beside the third window. So that's my preference. So the only options I have available are maximize and the ratio. And you can switch between your various layouts you have selected just by hitting the Windows key and spacebar. So you can see this window went into full screen. I didn't save my settings, so it's kind of getting blocked off by the resize I did here. But you can just hit space, and that will take you to your next available layout. Hit space again, and that will bring that up right there. And additionally, up here off to the side, you do have your available layouts that you can switch in between. So that's generally how layouts work. You're going to want to go ahead and play around with that and figure out what ones work best with your workflow and set those up as you see fit. Now down here, under all the layouts, you have your gap size around tiled windows. I have that set to 25. You see if I go ahead and bump that up, I could be ridiculous with it and have it so there are huge gaps. You could do that, for example, if you're gonna take a screenshot just to kind of show off, that's something you'd wanna do. But I think 25 is a pretty good number for what I'm going for. And then under that, you do have some more settings, such as your animation duration. So you can see if I go ahead and switch in between workspaces, there's a little bit of an animation there. If you didn't want that at all, you would just set that to zero. And then lastly, we have the Windows class excluded. If you have a window that's supposed to be a small little floating dialog and it opens up as a tiled window, you go ahead and input the class ID for that, and that will make sure that it always disable, well, always shows up as a floating window. And then over here we have hotkeys. There's actually quite a bit of them and quite a bit that you can do with hotkeys. Anything that you've seen me do, you could do with a hotkey. So you have like focus on last workspace, focus next workspace, kill the current window is super Q. You have various monitor options. So if you have multi-monitor setups, you can have certain hotkeys to move windows in between those monitors. You have your move windows to various workspaces, navigate to specific workspaces, resize the current window downward. So there's actually resizing options here. For example, if I click on this, I believe it's Windows key, Control and down, and you can see I'm resizing the window with that. So that's an option. And then down here, you could set specific hotkeys to go to specific layouts. So if you actually like them all and you have them all enabled, you don't have to hit Windows key spacebar, cycle through all of them until the one you find, you can set up a hotkey for example, to go to the maximize only layout. So you could do like Windows key shift M or something like that, whatever you really want for your specific setup. So that's really about it. I just wanted to really highlight this GNOME extension. It's wonderful, especially if you're in something like Ubuntu or Pop! OS and you want to go ahead and start playing with tiling window managers. This is a great little introduction where you don't have to really do anything except for click a button to get the window manager experience. Um, alternatively, I'll bring up, I did a video on Cronkite, which is a, a KDE Plasma or a KWIN extension. So if you're running Plasma and you want kind of the same tiling window manager workflow without having to change too much, Cronkite is a really good option for you. So other than that, that concludes this video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did like this video, liking helps out the channel a lot, so make sure you go ahead and do that. If you do enjoy this content, make sure you're subscribed and you ring that bell so you do not miss any future uploads. Please leave a comment down below telling me either what desktop environment you use if you're interested in tiling window managers at all. If you are using a tiling window manager, which one are you using? And if you're not, if you plan on trying out an extension like this, again, this is Material Shell for 
GNOME, or you could use Cronkite if you're on Plasma. So other than all that, I do hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye.